In this video series, we're going to go through the process of setting up a site using Joomla. Joomla is a powerful content management system, and there's quite a lot to it, but there's nothing difficult about it. It's just that there is a lot of functionality to it. So I'm going to go through the main ones that you're going to need to get a site up and going. Okay, so the first thing to do is go to Joomla.org, and then you want to download the most recent version here. So this one is going to be, in this case, uh, up here, Joomla 3.4 by 3. But whatever one is here, this is one you want to download. So go ahead and download that. Now also, you should go over to the left-hand side here and look at the technical requirements. Of note, you need PHP 5.3.10 at a minimum. A lot of hosts don't use that by default. For instance, if you're using HostGator and you're using a shared hosting plan, it doesn't use this one to, by default. So once you get it installed, it's going to give you an error that says you have the wrong version of PHP. But all you have to do is get on a chat session with them and tell them which domain you're running it on and they will switch it to the proper PHP version and then everything will work properly. Okay, so once that's downloaded, you're going to need to go and unzip it. So here it is here. Now if I right click on this, I can just do extract all or you can use any other program that you like that unzips files. I like to use 7-zip because it's faster. And you can download that for free. Just do a Google search for it. So I'm just going to do extract files. Now, while that's happening, what we need to do is go to our control panel and create a database since Joomla is database driven. Now, since Joomla is database driven, of course, you have to create one of these databases. And I'm going to show you in cPanel since that's what I'm using here. But no matter what hosting you're using, there will be a way to create a database. So I'm just going to use a database wizard here. Then I'll name my database Joomla. Next step. Now we need to create a username. I'm also going to call this one Joomla. But you can call it anything you like there. Now I'm going to generate a secure password. So copy this into your clipboard. And say you've copied it somewhere safe. Click Use Password. And create User. Now I'll give it all privileges here. Go to Next Step. Okay, now open up a notepad session so that you can save your your information here. So this is my password. And then I grab this stuff because this is my username and my database name here. It happened to be the same in this case, but you can name them different. Okay, so at this point, we should upload our files to our server. And to do that, we're going to use a program called FileZilla. You can use any FTP client you like, though. So let me open up FileZilla here. Okay, so here we have FileZilla. On the left-hand side are the files that are on our system, and this is what we want here, the files inside that directory. Right side is going to be our server once we get connected up. And to connect up, you put in your host name, which is your domain name, your username and password for your hosting account, and that will connect you. You can also set things up in the site manager so that once you're in there, you'll be able to connect to them anytime. Okay, so I'm gonna connect up to my server now. Okay, now what I wanna do is upload to this site. I'm gonna put it in a directory. So I'm gonna create directory and enter. And I'm going to call it Truck and SUVs with Reviews. Okay, and we'll click OK and go inside there. And now all we have to do is upload all this. So if you click one and then hit Control A, 
and then right click and upload and we'll upload all of those. Okay, so at this point, our files are all uploaded here. Now, to start the installer, all we have to do is type in the URL to our site. So in my case, it'll be my domain slash truck and SUV reviews. Okay, so if everything is gone according to plan, this is what you're going to see here. If you, remember, if you get that error about the wrong PHP version, go ahead and contact your hosting provider. Okay, so first select your language, and then we'll have our site name. I'll put that in here. And now put a description in here. This is your meta description, so it's used by the search engines. Okay, down here, whether the site's offline or not. So you can put it offline while you're building it, if you so desire. And then on the other side, we need our admin email, our admin username, admin password, and then verify the password. Okay, so at that point, we click Next. All right, now we need to put in our database information here. So I'm going to put MySQL. Your host location or your host name, this may or may not be right here, and I'll show you how you can find out. Go back to your databases section in your control panel or whatever you're using. You'll see something called PHP My Admin. Go inside there. And if you look right up here at the top, you'll see the server host name. So in this case, localhost is correct. So nothing to change there. Now down here, our username, our password, and our database name, we have all of that in our notepad. Now we made our database name and our username the same. So I'm going to copy that. So it goes here. And it goes here. And then we go get our password. And then you have your table prefix. So this is just a differentiate between tables and a database if you're using one database for all of your installs. Okay, let's go next. Now, next you can decide if you want some sample data put on your site. This is a good idea if you're just beginning and you want to see how everything works. I'm not going to do that in this case, so I'm just going to say none. And then down here, we can have it email us the configuration. Okay, so this is our main configuration, our database configuration. We have our pre-install check over here, and they also say yes. And our recommended settings. And our actual settings. Okay, so that looks all good. I'm going to click install. Okay, so now we have Joomla installed. Now you'll see a note here that says remove installation folder. You need to get rid of that for security purposes and so the whole thing runs correctly. So we'll click here. Okay, so it says it's fully removed. So now we can go, we can look at either the site or administrator. Let's go administrator. And we can sign in. Okay, so at this point, we have now installed Joomla. In the next video, we're going to start our setup process. All right, so we're going to have a look at site configuration and templates. But before we go there, we're right after the install here, and it's telling us we have some important messages. So let's review the messages and see what it has to tell us. So two-factor authentication is available if we want to use it. We can hide that. Okay, and then a couple of guides here that we can have a look at if we want. Okay, so let's go back here. 
Okay, so let's go back to administration now. Okay, so you see down the left hand side here, this is where we manage our site. And you also have the controls up here as well. So we're going to go down here to global configuration first. Okay, so this is where we can change the title of our site right here, put it offline if we want, and then we can use an offline message. We can use the default one, or we can change it here. On our offline image, we can use the standard one or change it. Okay, mouse over for edit icons. Now, just if you don't know what something is, you just put your mouse on it here, and it just tells you you could have a mouse over menu for different parts of it here. Okay, the editor you want to use, so we got tiny MCE. Okay, our default CAPTCHA, we don't have a CAPTCHA plugin on here yet, so we got nothing there. Default access level, so public, guest, registered, special, or super user. So you can put this the way you want it here. Usually you're gonna want it at public, but if you want to set a site to only be private for registered users or however you want to do it, you can do that there. Okay, so this is the size of the list in the control panel. The default feed limit. So that's your content items in the feed. And then the feed email address. Okay, so I made a description. I need to put in some keywords here. So I should spend some time thinking of what you want to put in there. Okay, this is for our robots.txt. So index follow means that it's just going to follow everything from the index page. Index no follow and no index no follow. Usually this is what you're going to want here. So content rights, this just describes what the user can do with your content. So if you tell, if you say here this is restricted content and may not be used by anyone other than the owner of this site, that will appear there and it gives the users an indication uh, that this content cannot be shared. Now, you can show the author meta tag on every article or not. I like to turn this off and show Joomla version. This usually you're going to want to turn off for security reasons. Okay, let's go to system. So this is telling you the location of your site by path. Okay, your help server. This is where you can turn on the debugging if you're having problems. Down here, your caching settings. So this is for work files. So this down here is an automatic logout. So if there's no activity after 15 minutes in this case, it's going to log them out. So you can change this to the way you like. And then this session handler is just is how Juma identifies users. Okay, let's go into server. Now, in all likelihood, you're not going to want to change anything in here, but you can change things, for instance, your mail server, if you want to use something besides PHP mail, even though this is usually the most reliable mail handler. And if you want to enable FTP or proxy settings. So normally you're not going to do anything in there. We have permissions. Okay, now you can change the permissions for the user groups down here. So for instance, public has this set of permissions for the different sections. And we're going to be leaving these at the default. But if you want to change something, this is where you can do it. So guests have these permissions by default. Manager, administrator, Okay, so I don't really suggest changing these unless you know what you're doing there. But usually that's going to be what you want. Okay, and then text filters. Okay, so this is a way that you can filter what people submit to your site. For instance, the public cannot submit any HTML and guess default blacklist. Okay, so you can tweak this the way you want. Again, I'm going to leave these 
at the default here. Okay, so let's save and close. Next, let's go into the template manager. Okay, so here are our templates. Now, you'll see over on the right here, there's options. So let's go into the template options first. And here we have whether we can preview. So let's enable that. Okay, and then our upload file size in megabytes. Okay, and then our valid font formats. Okay, and then permissions. This is where we can set the permissions for the different user groups again. Now you'll see that a lot of these are inherited from the actual user group. Okay, so guest. And you're probably not going to want to be changing any of these either. Okay, so let's save and close. All right, now, if we click on this, we can preview the template now that we've turned that on. So this is what that template looks like here. And this is the one that we don't have set to default right now. So if you see over here, see the little star there? That means that it can be set to default and the ones with the stars filled in are the default. Okay, so these are, there's the site and the admin theme. Okay, and then we give already know what this one looks like. But if we preview it, okay, so there's an example of when that's filled in. Now, these are the ones that are installed on here, but we can go and get more if we want, and we can install those. So for now, let's change the def change this one to the default here. Okay, so now we have beer three as the default for the site. Okay, now I want to show you how you can add a tab that we're going to need in the extensions, and it's going to be an add to web tab. I'm doing this while we're in here since we're going into extensions anyway, and this is an important function. So you see here it says add install from web tab. We want to click on that. And then it'll add the tab on here, which makes it easier to install extensions. So we'll click on that. And it's loading it up here. And there we go. So now we have another way we can install extensions. Okay, so what I want to show you now is how we can install other themes. So what we want to do is go over to Google, and then we want to search on Joomla templates. And you'll get a number of results, and you're probably going to want to look for free ones. And here's a free download. So I'm going to download this one. Okay, now we're going to go and we're going to install it. So back to our extension manager here. And what we want to do is upload package file. And then we just need to browse for that on our computer. Okay, so here it is here. So we'll open. And now we'll upload and install. And if all goes well, we should see that everything is okay. Okay, so it looks like it installed okay. So now we want to go to the extension manager. Or the template manager. So down here, template manager. And here it is right here. So let's just click on this for a preview. And there it is. Okay, so that's how simple it is to install a new template. And if I wanted to make it the default template, I just click it there. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to do some more setup. Now we're going to start setting up the content of our site. So you see up here we have articles and categories, and then we have menus. So what we want to do first is go to our category manager and set up any categories we're going to want within the site. Okay, so let's add a new category. 
and we'll make a main category for trucks. Now there's some other things you can do here. Publishing, this is just the publishing information. Permissions here. So you can set the permissions again. We've seen this before, so public, uh, guest, etc. So you have the different types of permissions that they can have. These are all set to inherited, which means that it's coming from the actual user group permissions that are already set by default. But you can see over here that guests are not allowed to do all of these things here. So delete, edit, etc. So if you need to change those, you can. Then we have options over here. And you can change the layout here. So we have blog in here, list, or you just use the global. You can have an image and you can put some alt text in here. Let's go back over here. You can put a description down in here. And then over on the right side, so it'll be published. If there's a parent, there won't be for this one, uh, access. So you can have a public guest registered special or just super user. So you can set that the way you want. Usually you're going to want these at public, but if you have some special content that you want to restrict to registered or something like that, you can do it there. And you have a note and version note. So those are all the things in here, but for the most part, you can just put that in the description in here if you want. I'm just going to put trucks there and I'm going to save. Okay, save and new would have been the one to take there actually because I'm not done yet. Okay, so I'm going to add a new one again. And this one's going to be called SUVs. Okay, and this is all the same. I'm just going to leave it like that. And I'm going to do save and new. So you just carry on like that. So I'm going to say half ton. Now you could just make this as a category or we could put it underneath one of these. So I'm going to say trucks. But you could leave it as its own category and use it for both of them. But I'm going to set it this way. Oh, I should have save and new there. Okay, so I'll make another one called half ton. And then I'm going to put it under. SUVs, save and new. I'm going to call one three quarter ton, and I'm just going to leave this outside of the category tree. Save and new. And then crossover, and that will be under SUVs. And we're going to do save and close. Okay, so just set up the categories you know you're going to need there. You can add them later. So we'll start with the categories now. Let's go back to content. And let's go and to article manager and add new article. Okay, so this is where you would put in your article. You can type it right in here, or you can copy it and paste it from somewhere else. Okay, so here's our article in here. Let's go over, and we'll say half-ton trucks. Over here, okay, we have some other things. We can set an intro image here. We just upload it. We can do other things with images down here. So we have a full article image image float so you can set all of these things to work the way you like we have options here so there's all kinds of options that can be set and it's using the global settings right now but you can change any of these and then configuration configure and edit screen and permissions so there's a lot of things that 
you can set it's very flexible and these are what we've seen before they're just using the group defaults okay so let's save okay so the status is now published you can set it as a featured article if you want here okay so we have added some content to the site but it isn't actually on the site yet because we haven't put it anywhere so if we were to go look at the site right now you're not going to see anything you see because we haven't given it any parameters as to where to display or where to put it on the menu okay so let's go back here so you can just go through and add some articles in here as you like okay so let's go out of here okay so this is the article manager category and we can set featured articles like i showed you there before now i didn't add any images to this article when we were first in here so there's a couple ways to do it we can go back into the images and links and then this is the intro image where you can use this on blogs and stuff and then there's the full article image down here you can also use the editor and bring one right into the article so if we go back here and we click here and we click on the insert image here we have to bring a URL in for this one okay so those are the different ways you can do it you can use the media manager as well to bring in an image in and I'm going to show you that in here so let's go into images and links and let's go down to this full article image let's select so this shows us the images that are on our server but if you look down here you can browse for one on your computer and upload it so that's what i'm going to do pick this one and start upload okay so i'll select it and then insert okay so there it is there so let's uh, save and close okay now you would just put any articles in here as you go you put, you put several on here you might want to put a welcome one on here that you can put on your front page so let's do that let's create a article that is just going to be kind of a welcome to our site okay now something i didn't show you in the other ones that's important is I mean, the publishing and in here you can put time publishing if you want creation date and some other things down here what you have over here is your meta stuff so your meta description and your meta keywords that are important for the search engines so it's a good idea to put those in here as well okay so let's save and close okay so that one is in uncategorized because i don't want it in with my car and truck stuff okay so at this point i've shown you how you can set up your articles now let's go over to menus and we're going to go to the main menu and add a new menu item okay so what we want to do is set our home page here so if we go over to this side and we click here we'll click on home and then over here we're going to select and it's going to be article and we want a single article now we're going to select the article here and this is the one we want okay now down here we want to click default page that sets the home page there 
and then here you have your window so parent would be the current window and then you can have a new window if you want okay so that sets our home page there there's some options in here as to what you can display we're going to publish the article before we look at those we have the link type here i'm going to set the styles and the link image if you want to do that page display and change these if you want our metadata i talked about this before so made a description and keywords here your robots so I'll use the global or you can set them to follow index follow no follow and no index no follow and module assignment okay so i didn't go over the modules that are pre-installed yet but the breadcrumbs are in here and the login form is already installed here we'll go into that a little bit later okay so let's save and close okay we forgot to put the menu title in here so we'll say home and we'll save and close All right, let's go have a look at our site now. Now, here's what I was talking about on the display stuff. So we have the category, the published date and time, and who published it, okay? So we can turn those off, and I'm gonna take you back there and show you that in a minute. And here's our article, and it's on the menu over here, okay? So that's how we get our first article in there. This would be our home page. So let's go back and change that now. So we're going to go back into this one. And then we want to go into options. Okay, so show category, you want to hide. Link category, you want to hide. Okay, show author, hide. Create date, hide. Modify date, hide. Publish date, hide. Okay, so let's save and close and let's go have another look. Okay, we still have hits on here that I didn't hide. Let me go back and fix that. Okay, so back into here. And then into options. And then we need to take hits out of here. Okay, so here's show hits. So we're gonna hide that. Okay, let's save and close let's go have another look now okay so we have all of those things taken off there okay so we got our start here we have our home page on here in the next video we're just going to continue adding content to our page Okay, now one thing I didn't go over was tags. We were using tags in our articles, or we could be using them. And you can go over and look at those and set them up in components. Now I didn't really go over components very much here, but here we go. Here's tags. And here's where we can add tags. So you click new. Okay, and you see the same sort of screen that you see for everything else. This is, for instance, categories. This is the same type of thing. So if we want to tag, we can say truck. Okay, so you can give it some description down here if you want. We have our publishing options, just normal publishing things here. Options, 
So you can use the global layout, which is usually what you're going to want to do, or CSS class if you want to change it. And then you can add an image like I showed you before here. Okay, then on the right side, we can set a parent. If we have a, other tags, we can have parent and child tags. Access, language. Okay, so simple as that. We'll just save and close. That's how you can add tag in there. Let's add one more for cars, actually, or SUVs. It's called SUV. And we'll save and close. Okay, so now the tags will be available when you're creating your articles. So speaking of that, let's go back to menus. And we can actually create a new menu or we can continue adding to the main menu. So let's create a new menu. And let's call this articles. And we'll say articles here. And we'll save and close. Okay, now what we need to do is link a module to it. The modules tell it where it's going to appear. Okay, so here's our menu. The base item. So if you want to menu within a menu you can for instance you could go here and it would be within there okay, and the start level so at level one and all so this will show the sub menus and then menu assignment so on all pages no pages only on the pages selected or on all pages except those selected Module permissions. Okay, so same as what we've seen on all the other permission screens and advanced. Okay, so you have some advanced things in here that you may want to use. I'm just going to leave them at the default and we're going to save and close. Oh, forgot to put the title in there. So articles. And I will save and close. Okay, as you see, we forgot to put the position in here. Okay, so just to show you where you get those positions from, I, you go back to your template manager and you just click on this preview button here. Okay, so then you can see the different positions here. And this is where you can place your content. Okay, so let's go back. Now over here, this is where we can select our position. Okay, so we need to make sure we're in the right theme here. So B3, and then we can find a position at where we want it. And let's uh, save and close. Now you can play with these and move them around until you get things where you want. So if we look at articles now, you see it says position five. So let's go have a look. Okay, and here is our article menu here. So now what we can do is add articles to our menu. So let's go over to menus, and then we'll go to articles and add new items. Okay, and then we're gonna select what we want here. Okay, so on our articles menu, we want articles. And then we can pick the way we want them to be on here. Okay, so let's say we want to list all categories. Okay, and then the where we want to start. So root means it'll bring everything in under it. Okay, so we'll call it categories. And then we have other options along here. So we'll just we're gonna I'm just gonna leave all these at the default here. 
And let's save and close. Okay, let's go have a look at our site now. And then we have categories here. And then this will open another page. And then it'll show a list like this. Okay, so that's one way you can do it. Let's go back and change that now. And let's change this. Let's go into articles and we'll go single article and then we'll put each article in here. So we'll select an article and we'll pick this one. Okay, now remember we want to go into options and we want to hide some things otherwise some things are going to show that we don't want so we'll hide the author link the author create date modify date publish date okay so let's save and close Actually, we should change the title here. You have categories there. Okay, so let's change this to the name of the article. So we'll call it uh, 2015. Okay. And we'll save and close. Okay, so I click on this. Okay, and here's our article. Here's the picture we uploaded before. So let's go back to the menu. Got a new menu item. Actually, we don't have another article. So let's. I'm going to add another quick article. I'll we'll just add one more article to that menu. Okay, so we're going to add a new article. Or a new menu item. Okay, so it's going to be article on a single article. Test articles, article. Excuse my spelling there. Okay, so let's just save this one now. And back to our site here. There's our CV article. And there it is there. Okay, so there's how you can add menus to your site and add content within the menus. Now, like I showed you when you were choosing things, you can choose other things on your menu, search and so on. So that's a, another way you can put things on there. Okay, one last thing, let's add a search to our main menu. Let's go here. And let's add a menu item. And we're going to add a search. Okay, so again, we have our options link types display metadata okay so let's just save and close search
Okay, so there's our search there. And then we go to the search page. Okay, so that's how we can work with menus and content and tags. Now we're gonna talk about components and extensions. Components and extensions are what adds functionality to your site. So if we go over here and look at components, we have a bunch of them that are pre-installed. We have banners, contacts, Joomla update. Well, you see them here. So these are all components that are pre-installed and we we're already in the tags before. Over here, we have extension. And in the extensions, we have the extension manager, we have the module manager. So if we go into the module manager, this is where you would find the modules that you have installed here. So we have our breadcrumbs, breadcrumbs, articles. This is the one we, the menu that we made here. We have the main menu and the login form. Okay, and then we go back up to extensions. We have plugins. So you can add different plugins to your site to increase the functionality. And again, it comes with a bunch of them pre-installed, but they're not all enabled. You see the ones with check marks are enabled, and the ones without are disabled. So there's a lot of them in here that aren't enabled and some that are enabled that you may not want. So you can go through here and change any of these. And there's quite a lot of these in here by default because we haven't installed any yet. All we installed was a theme for demonstration purposes, but you do the same thing when you are installing modules. All you have to do is, let's go to the extension manager. Now you remember this, this is where we installed the theme by uploading a package file. So you can do the same thing, or you can install from a directory on your computer, on your server. You can install from a URL, and we enabled this install from web right at the beginning here. So we can go through these and install them from here. So let's go and just do a install one. Doesn't really matter. We'll just pick one here to install. Okay, so each of these, you can see the reviews and a description of what it does down here. So just pick one you want to install. Okay, so let's look at the Google Maps here. So if we want to install this using this method, install it from web, from the tab that we added here, you just click there. Okay, and then you'll just see here it's a plugin. So we can just install it. Click install. Okay, so we now have that installed. So that's another way you can do it. It's a little bit easier. So you don't have to go tracking down the files and download them and then re-upload them again to install them. Okay, so now if we go up to extensions and plugin manager. Now to find it, let's just do a search here. Okay, and then there's our Google Maps. You see that it's disabled, so we can enable it now. Now I've enabled the Google Maps plugin and we can use it on our site. So as you see, the possibilities are virtually endless. All you have to do is install the extensions that you need and you can increase your functionality. Just put on there exactly what you want. And you see that there's filters over here as well. I put in the search for Google, but there's you can search for different parameters over here to try and narrow down what you're trying to find. Now you can also, let me take this out of here. You can also click on these to sort. So if we click here, so now it's bringing the disabled ones up first. Or by name, type, element, etc. So you can sort those so you can find them easier. Okay, and then 
you can enable them one at a time and disable one at a time, or you can select a bunch and do it from up here. You'll also see up here an uh, item called check-in. And you see this on a lot of the screens, articles, and so on. And the reason that is there is because Joomla is a multi-user type system, you could have multiple admins in doing something. And let's say we were in one of these plugins doing something, and then we walked away from it and then closed the browser and never saved it. It would be checked out by the system when we were editing it, and it would never be checked back in. So if somebody else wants to work on it, or if we come back and sign in later and it's marked checkout, we can check it in with that button. Okay, so it just prevents any type of errors. If multiple people are trying to do something, they're automatically checked out by the system. And if something goes wrong, you can check them back in. Now let's go work with some of the components that we have installed on here now. So you can add banners. Contacts is one that we should have in here. So we have contacts and categories. Categories would be if you have, say, a shipping department and a parts department and uh, administration department. So you would want to set up categories for the different contacts. So let's set up one called sales. Okay, and then we have our different options again. Okay, our permissions and options. Over on this side, we can have parents again, who can access them, the language tags. So now if we wanted to use one of the tags, we can use them here. So for truck sales, we could use truck. We could also add SUV. So you're allowed to add multiple tags there. Okay, so that's all I'm going to put here is sales. So we're going to say and new, and we'll put service here. Okay, now really tags doesn't really make sense on this type of an item, but I just wanted to show you how they work. So I'm not going to actually put that in. I'm going to do save and close. Now what we can do, let's disable this uncategorized. So now what we can do is add contacts. Go up to here to contacts. Now we can add new. Okay, and then you would select a user. Now we don't have really any users in here other than the admin user right now. So I guess that's who will submit. But otherwise you would have some users in there and then you can fill the rest of this out here. So you could put their image in, their position, say their marketing manager, their email, their address, whatever of these items that you want to put in here, you can use. Now let's go over to this side and we're in sales, so we pick that category. Now we can also go up to miscellaneous information and give more information about this contact. Publishing. Display. And the form. Okay, so you can fill any of these out that you need. So let's go back to here and save. So I forgot to put the name of the contact in there. So sales manager. And you don't have to actually use a user, but if you do, it populates this for you. Let me just show you here. So we're going to save and close. Okay, now what I want to do is go and put this on a menu now. So let's go to menus and we want the main menu and we're going to add. And then we're going to select and contacts. 
Okay, and then list all contacts. Okay, now let's put in here contact us. And then we have other things, so categories, and then the list layout. Okay, so you can change any of these to fit the way you want them to look. I'm just gonna leave everything at the defaults here. Okay, so as you can see, there are a lot of things that you can change here. Okay, and then on this side, so we're in the main menu. Okay, so there we go. So let's save and close. Now let's go look at our site. And now we have contact us. And then there's sales. And sales manager. Okay, and there it is there. Now back on the settings, we could have turned off any of these things that we didn't want them to see. So that's how you can get your contact us information on there. Okay, so this is how you use the components. Let's go through another example here. So with messaging, you can send private messages. Okay, so you pick the recipient out of here and then you put the subject in here and you can just put the message down here and then you can send it. Let's go back up here now to components and let's go to news feeds. These are feeds that you can bring into your site from other sites. Let's go to categories. Okay, so let's set up a new category here. And we'll call this reviews. And then you can give it a description down here, just like always. Again, we have parent, so we can have child and parent categories for this, or tags and so on. Okay, publishing, so we have publishing options, permissions again, and options. So I'm just gonna leave that there. I can do save and close. Now we're gonna add a feed. So let's say new. Okay, so I'll put a title up here and let's say from Hemmings. Okay, and then we need to put the link in. So let's go to Hemmings and find a link. Okay, so I went to their blog and then down to the bottom here. And you'll see here's the RSS feed right here. So let's just copy the link location. Let's come back over here, put the link in here. Okay, over here, our category, I have it as reviews. That actually is incorrect, but it doesn't matter in this case. But I probably wanna pick something uh, more like news here because it's coming from Hemmings rather than the reviews. Okay, the images. So again, we've seen this before. We can bring in an image here. Publishing. I made a description and so on on this side. And display. Okay, so number of articles and so on. Okay, so you set this up the way you want. Let's save. Okay, so now we have an RSS feed, news feed set up from Hemmings. Okay, so let's close. Okay, so let's put that on the menu now. We'll go to the main menu again. 
and we'll add a new menu item. We're going to select the type here and news feeds. Okay, so you pick how you want it here. So news. Okay. So I'm just going to save and close. Okay, now we can move these up and down just by grabbing the items here and moving them where we want. So let's put the contact underneath here. So we move this one up probably. There we go. Okay, let's go look at our site. There's our news feed. Reviews. Okay, and then from Hemmings. Okay, and there it's showing the information from that news feed and let's just go back here you see this display here is in the options we could have turned this off I just took the defaults but you can turn these things off within there if you don't like those there okay so that should give you a good idea of how you can use the different components that you install to add functionality to your site and how to install modules and plugins so that you can put all the functionality you need on your site. Okay, one more thing I want to show you before we conclude the video. Let's go back up here to Extension, Extension Manager. Now, I didn't uh, go over this stuff on the left side here. So if you go to Updates, it'll show you anything that needs to be updated. Okay, so no updates. Here you can manage your extensions. Okay, and we have been in here, but from another area. Okay, so like I said before, you can turn these on or off. Discover. Okay, so this is for any extensions that you may have uploaded outside of this area. Some of them are too large. You might have to upload them using an FTP program. So this will tell you any of those that are here. And this is our database information. Okay, any warnings that there might be? And then if you want to install language packs. Okay, so you can install them from here. And then update sites. Okay, so this just shows you some stuff that's within the site here. All right, so what I want to do in the next video now is we're going to have a look at how we can change the top here. We want to change these colors and the, the uh, logo here, this information. So we're going to do that, and we're also going to change a template. And I'm going to show you uh, how we can move these across. Uh, in this template, there's no right-hand side, so everything's on the left. So we'll do that in the next video. Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how you change the template so that it suits your needs. So what we want to do is go over here to Extensions and then Template Manager. So right now we're working with Beer 3. We'll work with this one and then I'm going to switch to the other template down here, this one. And we're going to do a little more with that. So what you do is you click here. Okay, and then what we want to do is go to Advanced. And here's 
where our image is. So this is the image we're seeing now, the Joomla image. Let's look at our site. So this is what we're seeing here. And then down here, we have Joomla, open source content management. And open source Joomla, open source content management. Okay, so what we want to do, let's just cl clear this. And then let's save here just to have a look what it did. Okay, so it took the transparent image out and now we're seeing Joomla open source content management. So at this point we have no image and we're just seeing this down here. So let's bring in an image. I created one. So I'm just gonna select it here. Okay, and then we're going to upload it. And this is the image I created, so we'll open. Start upload. And we'll select and insert. Okay, so let's save that and go have a look at our what it does. Okay, so truck and SUV reviews. So back over here now, we can take this out and uh, let's, um, or we can change it. Let's say best reviews. And then we'll just put here welcome. All right, I'm gonna save this here and we'll just have another look. So welcome now. The reason you're not seeing this is because we took out the transparent image and put our own in there. So if you put an image in there that isn't the transparent one that was there before, you're not gonna see this. So we'll just take that out. Now let's go down some more here and you'll see template color. Okay, so we have personal, nature, red, turquoise, and custom. So let's just go through a couple of these. So let's say nature. And we'll save here. Okay, so let's change the the color here, as you see. Let's go back and try another one. And then we'll do a custom. So let's go red. Okay, so you see what's happening there. So what we want to do now is go custom. Okay, so what you want to do now is create a header to put up here. Now, if we go into headers here, you'll see the headers that are available. Now, let's just go right click on one here and let's view the Im image info and you'll see here that it says 700 px pixels by 180 pixels so we if we're going to create our only one 700 by 180. okay so let's So go ahead and create your own header if you want. 
and then you can upload that or you can use one of the ones that are in here let's just pick one just as an example and insert and if we put our mouse over that so you'll see what it'll look like let's save and let's go look now doesn't quite look right so looks like this is a different size here than what's supplied so you'd have to determine how big the header would be and make it the proper size so it fits all the way across okay so I'm going to try uh, another one here that I created let's try it here so now I'm going to upload Save. Okay, so I made it 1800 by 180 and it fit across here. Now you'll see here that we have navigation before content or after content. So if we go up here on this template, like I said, we don't have two sides to it. So before content means that navigation is on this side and after content means it'll go over here okay so let's go back here and set this to after content and save and for this template it's going to move it over to the other side now okay and the last thing is background color here so uh, the, that's the default is this background color if we go and change this let's click here and let's just do something like that save we'll refresh here okay so let's change the background color of the site there All right, now I want to look at uh, changing the template here. So let's uh, close this. Now let's make this one the default template down here. Now let's go have a look at the site. Okay, so now you'll see that we have uh, some of our stuff over here. But remember, we set positions and we don't have our other things on here, which is our navigation for the articles. So what we need to do now is go back into here and go back to extensions and then module manager. Now we want to do is go to the articles, which is the one that isn't showing right now. And we're going to have to give it a position on this template. Okay, so we'll X that one out. And then we're going to go down to our template for this one, which is Protostar. Now let's put it left and save and close now let's go have a look at our site okay so it's now moved the articles over to this side okay so as you see we have two columns of navigation now or two columns where we can put different components on here okay so let's go 
and change this. So remember last time we had our image up here. Right now all we have is text. So we can go back here and then we can go into the template manager. And into Protostar. Advanced. Okay, so this is our template color right now. Our background color. So if we want to upload our logo, we can do that again. Let's go get our logo. Okay, so let's save. Let's go back and refresh now. Okay, so there's our logo now. So you could just make it a bit bigger if you wanted to, to go across here. And then our background again. So if we want to change our background color. So there you go. That's how you can change that template. So it works the same for any template you're using. You would just go back to the template manager, pick the one that you want to use, and then just go inside it and change what you need to change. Okay, so there you go. At this point, you know how you can get started creating your websites using Joomla.